way for the, them to remunerate you yeah. for it. And, you know, in my community, because it's sold, most of them, uh, there are people who still buy CDs and they have CD players, yeah. you know, and they love to come up after the gig and buy a CD, maybe have you sign it. I don't know if they actually play it when they get home or not, but it's a it's a point of contact yep. where they can thank you for the evening that they appreciate it. And I think that that's a really important aspect. Absolutely. But, uh, but I'm also looking for ways for people to monetize. Um, is it improper for me to ask, do you cash out from... Uh, Live me, do you get any kind of measurable income from that? Um, so I'll be perfectly honest with you. I was actually contracted by Live Me for oh, a while. Wow. I was a contracted broadcaster up on, from the moment that I started in June of 2017. They saw, um, you here the they saw me on the promenade and they were like, hey, we're looking to try to like bring in new, like creative people specifically. Um, and you know, we weren't allowed to announce it at the time just because, like, we didn't want anybody to feel, like, weird about, like, hello, I'm the, you know, so... You don't want people to think, I'm not going to do it unless they pay me. Exactly. Um, and so for a while, you know, like, they contracted me as, as a talent broadcaster. Um, and so I was being paid, like, not a ton, but I was being paid en enough that it was, it was helpful, supplemental, it was a few hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Um to broadcast like a certain number of hours and then after uh, I think my contract it was done on two month basis so it was renewed every two months and then my last two month contract was um, March to April of 2018 so after April of 2018 now I've just been did doing you it decide on my own. To let that last the day, uh, no what they're doing is they're changing how they Exactly, they're changing how they structure and they're changing how they bring broadcasters in. So there was another um, opportunity that was offered to me that I passed on, um, just because I'm not necessarily interested in becoming an exclusive live me broadcaster. Oh. I've, I've been sort of an exclusive live me broadcaster by default. There's a lot um, of platforms out there. But there's a lot of platforms out there, and what I've also realized is I'm just not trying to make a career as a live streamer specifically. Right. I'm not trying to make a career as a YouTuber specifically. I like having these aspects of my career. Yeah. I love live streaming. I love the people that I've connected with and the opportunities that I've found yeah. through live streaming, but it's not my main goal to be a live streamer. Well, it's kind of so like social media too. Like, there's people who are on Twitter, there's people who are on Facebook, there's people exactly. who are on different Instagram. platforms for different reasons. And, and, and you're never going to reach the people that are only on Facebook yep. if you're just on Twitter. Yeah. You know, the question is, I'm thinking about trying to dive more heavily into Twitch. Okay. You know? Yeah, I have a few friends who broadcast on Twitch. I mean, it's not known as a music platform. No, it's primarily gaming. Yeah. From what I understand. But, but there's people there. I oh mean, sure. That's 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 the difference. Most of my friends, if they have streamed, they've streamed on concert window. But I've never even heard of that. Uh, it's been around. It was one of the very first services. Okay. And it, it's a liberal split. I think you get 70% of the game. Oh, interesting. And, and, uh, but they pretty much, you can do a free concert, but they encourage you to always charge. Okay. You know, because they want their 30%. I feel like I've heard of other platforms that do something similar like that, but like that name specifically. Yeah, they, they've been around for a long time, and yeah. they did it in a weird way, and they encouraged people to do it with a laptop and a webcam, and it doesn't look good, and uh, it, it's just it's a bad situation. But the biggest problem with, uh, well, there's two problems. One is their playback client is pretty buggy. Okay. So I go to a lot of concert window shows because my kind of plan, and I'm always futzing around. Every time I make a comment, I lose my audio. Huh. And then i got to refresh the page. It's just, it's bad. Really good. Interesting. Bad technology. Okay. But, but it's a nice split, you know, and people sure. can do okay with a lot of the clubs in my world are using it. Interesting. Okay. Thing for that. I think a big one that I've found out here is um, Gig Town. I have never even heard of it. That's <laughs> funny. Um, yeah, so out here I think Gig Town does something similar where all you have to do, which is actually kind of interesting, and I don't know too much about it, I just know other artists who have used it and they've said basically, hey, just pull up the Gig Town app. The app itself is free. If you pull this up and you check into my show, I get five bucks. And I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. You know, like, so Gig Town is getting the app download and the potential for, like, you know, like, new subscribers and things like that. Do they make the and money through advertising? <clears throat> I think it's primarily advertisement and building the clientele. 
and then you can, um, I don't know if Gigtown was originally a streaming site, but it was definitely a solid like networking. And then what it does too is it allows other venues and promoters to see, oh, you've had 35 people check into your show at this spot? Come play our show because you can draw a crowd. You know, so like it's kind of setting up a little bit more of a, you know, like because otherwise it's so hard in the city to really know like what's your draw like. Do you have a, uh, an account over there? I mean, if I looked up Lee, would I find you? Or? Probably not. I think okay. I checked into a friend's show once like okay. two years ago and I haven't ever done anything with it since. I'll have to check it out and see what the deal is. Uh, yeah, the platform may have changed and I may be remembering things wrong, but I feel like it was something like of that sort of... Well, and Busker had something like that. Yeah, going. Busker as well. But I think Busker's gone now. I believe we've gone. Oh. The last time I tried to log in. And there's so yeah, no, there's so much turnover yeah. too. And then there's you know, up live and go live. And what is it? Bygo there's like Bygo and Up Live and Go Live and, and this yeah. yeah, there's But but the thing that I, I really liked about Live Me was even though it's not my demo, mm -hmm. six hundred and twenty-five million users. I mean if one person in 625 likes what you do, that's a million potential fans. Yep. You know, and certainly yeah. you've amortized uh, that to the tune of 115,000. Roughly, whatever. yeah, getting there. You yeah. know. Well, and, and, and the, the nice thing too, for me, with Live Me especially, is that the more that I have encouraged my followers on Live Me to also find me on other social media, those have been the people who are actually engaging with me. Because it's one thing to be like, hey, I've got my friends, I've got you know, people on the street who follow me on Instagram, but one person might follow me on Instagram and then six months, a year later, they like one of my posts right. or they comment on something. You know, so it's like yeah. keeping up engagement is, is, at least for me, just because... I'm not interested in like branding and becoming a face and becoming, you know, like well, I'm just. You should be interested in branding. From a, I'm not interested in branding from the standpoint of like all of my photos look the same, oh, all yeah. of the, you know, like that kind of branding, like yeah. sort of the classic YouTuber branding, yeah. I should say. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, going back to what you said, like my brand is me, you yeah. know, and from the standpoint, if I had to pick, if somebody came up to me and they said, what is your brand? I would say authenticity giving like a safe space for people to come and be all of themselves yeah. and then music that reflects that level of vulnerability and like communication well, like you're that's clearly you know you're a very kind person and that comes out in everything that you do Thank you. and you really i don't know it's just warm and that's one of the things i think is interesting with the live streaming is it's one to many but it feels like one to one oh absolutely you know yeah. the people at the bar end they're not aware of the other hundred right, thousand right, right. fans or whatever. Yeah. You know? And I think you do a nice job of, of balancing. Thank you very much. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I love to tune in and just watch you sing, and that's really great. But, uh, oh, I, I, uh, I'm still trying to hook up with Claire Means. I heard from her today, but we haven't figured out okay. if we're going to connect. But almost every time I see her stream, she's, she's busking. She yep. doesn't really interact. Mm -hmm. with, people. I don't, I don't know if it's a missed opportunity or not. I sense it's I think, so, I think two things play into it. One, the, originally when I started live streaming, it was on Periscope. And that's pretty much all that I did, was I'd busk, I'd check in with people, I'd be like, hey, thanks for coming, my name is Lee, give me a follow, blah, 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 and then I'd go back to what I was doing. And that's pretty much all the interaction that I would have. And then when I'd finish my set, I'd be like, thank you guys so much for coming, don't forget to follow me, and like, I'd go through like the standard spiel of social media and this, that, and the other thing, and then I would pretty much just cut it off. And I, for the first few weeks of my, you know, like, initial contact with Live Me, that's actually what I did was pretty much that same thing where I'd be like thanks guys for coming I appreciate you being here and um, in a very like non like judgmental way they just kind of came to me and they're like hey so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to sort of get away from the idea of live streaming being set it and forget it thanks right. guys for coming broadcast over now and we want it to be more of a broadcast and so like and I was like oh that's interesting and they're like we want this to be interactive and then when I started processing that and I sort of changed my tack, where I'd be like, hey guys, I'll check in with you now when I can, stick around for after, then we'll actually get to hang out and chat some more. Then the 
honestly, like, for me, the quality of my interaction, like, I didn't care about numbers or anything like that, but I was like, the quality of my interaction shifted because I actually got, it did become more of like a one-on-one -on -one or like a one-on-a-few yeah. people, you know, like the people who were there yeah, in the you comment. Might have had some conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like now it's become way less of, hello everyone, I am Lee, this face on your screen, listen to my music, follow me on Instagram, goodbye. And it's become much more of a community building experience, which I am way more interested in than anything else. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest things that broadcasting, specifically on Live Me, has done for me as a, you know, as an artist, if you will, because I've never wanted to just be a face on a poster that no one knows is a human being. What I want is that level of community. Like, sure, awesome, amazing. I'm, I'm overwhelmed that people are fans of what I do creatively and personally, apparently. Um, but. I don't want anyone to think of me as being anything other than a person that they can talk to, you know? And and that to me is really kind of the, the coolest thing about it. And I think that that, I think that other artists, like I know that Claire interacts with a lot of people outside of the actual like live stream that she's, she's on, on you know? Stream, but she does a lot and I haven't followed the Periscope. Yeah. I'm not sure. Periscope is a different environment. Um, from the standpoint that like I did when I did it for a while I didn't really feel like I could connect with a lot of people um, and um, then it started where I would just start getting like really weird people coming into my broadcast and I'm just like look I don't want to talk to you about my feet or whether or not I'm wearing socks like, that's just oh, <laughs> you know and, yeah. and so it kind of like dipped down for a while and I think it's sort of slowly coming back from that but I you know I got out of it and I don't know if they have a population wandering around in there or not. You know? um, yeah. And uh, like I say, it's a good thing and a bad thing about live meters. There's, yeah. there's definitely a curb factor in there. Or yeah, no, there, I mean, and that's also part of the nature of any kind of live streaming camera setup things. Like, you're going to get some. Well, I like the fact that they people. let you set up admins and there's mm -hmm. some, some nice. Yeah, the admin part is nice. It. Um, yeah. And it's helpful too. But, uh, so it. it at this point, it's not really a significant uh, financial part. Of it's not any financial part of my, oh, what right. I do so you, at this point. Um, of once, course, you don't really promote the tipping in your. I don't, um, and and part of it is just because I'm not doing it for that, you yeah. know. And another part of it, like I, I, at the end of the day, obviously yes, I want my life to be sustaining income from the things that I create yeah. um, but at the same time I go in today's economy knowing the kind of people you know and again it goes back to this building community as opposed to just seeing my fans as dollar signs yeah. I'm like hey man I know you are struggling right now with finances and you've expressed to me that you want to get my music and you, you know, like, so I'll set some stuff aside for you yeah. so that when you do have a moment that, like, this 15 or $20 is something that you can comfortably afford, I got you. Yeah. But I'm not going to be like, oh, really? Like, you only have, like, $1 or $5 that you can give me? Really? Well, then fine. Give me $5. You yeah. know, it's not 10 but what, you know, like, and so yeah. I feel like sometimes it becomes too much of a culture because it's so easy you have the protection of the internet. You know, yeah. you are really just a face on a yeah. screen for to a certain extent. And I feel like it's too easy to see the people in the broadcast. Um, and again, it's, it's a, again something that has set me apart from other live me broadcasters. Yeah. And I've had people express this to me. They're like, I love the fact that you don't ask for gifts. I, I because think it's it, Catherine Rojas' job. I think that's what all she does <laughs> is live me, you know. Yeah. And she's very good at extracting expensive gifts from mm -hmm. people. If they want to do that, that's great. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, if people want to send me, you know, like a large amount of money via live me, that's amazing. The other reason that I don't necessarily ask for it is because if I have someone, you know, who let's say that their budget for just like whatever they want to do, like let's say they're like, oh, well, I can spend $50 on Lee this month. Yeah. I would much rather you take that $50 and actually go to my website and purchase my music as opposed to taking the $50, putting it into an app where I'm really going to only end up seeing like 20, maybe 25 sure. of it, sure, you know, yeah. and, and so I, and that's another kind of reason why I'm sort of getting people to 
come out into the real world, if you will, of the other social media platforms is because I want to, I want to kind of cut out like the, okay, well, you put, you take this $50 and you spend it in live me, so now it becomes $39.99 because of how their gift translates, and then you send it to me, and then I'm only actually seeing, like, $18.99, and then I have to, like, cash it out, so really I'm only seeing, like, $9.74, you know, like, what, and it just becomes, like, all these little things get chunked away, and, you know, and, and, it's a, a similar reason why I haven't sought out any kind of label or like representation because right now I can sit in my room, I can produce, uh, you know, like, and, and thankfully at this point I'm sharing a studio with a friend of mine so I have access to much higher end equipment um, and so I'll be able to start like comfortably putting things out that are like industry quality that I could potentially shop around to radio stations and stuff like that. But if I were to take this and I were to go to a label, They'd be like, all right, here's your advance of $100,000. And I'm like, sweet, now I gotta make up $100,000 plus whatever they want me to give back. And then maybe I'll start seeing something, you know? And so it's just, they really are. And, I, and I'm of a similar mentality now with the live streams. Like, I love the fact that you wanna send me, you know, all these little fun gifts. I don't want you to, like, overspend in this app, though, because what I'm more interested in is if you are gonna, like, Again, I feel weird saying it, but like if you are gonna spend money on me, just spend the money on me. me. Don't like do all this other stuff. Like just go straight to my Patreon and be like, sweet, I can give you five bucks a month, or you know, some or purchase this album for ten dollars or something like that. Um, Because then that translates way more directly to things that I can do that are sustainable, as opposed to you know putting most of it into an app that I'm not gonna you know. Okay. Trying to figure out what I can tell people to expect <laughs> to get from the different platforms. Sure. So, primarily for you, it's a connection tool. Okay? Absolutely. Live live streaming broadcasting is 100% a way for me to, in real time, connect in a very personal face to. I mean, comment section obviously, but like what feels like to me a face to face way. Yeah. Um. You know, it's it's different than posting a video online and responding to the comments. Yeah. You know, I'm actually getting to be there and interact with people as things are happening. And it's also, again, going back to the whole creating space thing, what I'm doing is I'm opening up this floor to everyone who can also in real time be there. Right. You know, and so it's not so much like, a, oh, well, I commented on this video and, hey, cool, they responded within an hour or they responded within a day, and then maybe somebody else responds, and it, it's, it is still a level of interaction, but it's not the same as somebody writes a comment, it pops up on my screen, and they get to see me laugh, and I get to know that they're laughing right there along with me, and we're sharing this actual moment in time. Well, and when I watch a stream, I feel like I'm with you. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I wouldn't if I was, and I'm embarrassed, I haven't watched your YouTube channel. How do you make use of the YouTube channel? I don't. <laughs> No, I've been, I, um, it's, it's, it's been a, a long time coming. I've been really bad about keeping it updated, but I'm going to start uploading things like once a month now. Um, and what I was originally doing with my YouTube channel would be like, you know, just like live performances of me in my bedroom playing a new song that I wrote.